What if I told you there were strategies for holding on to habits until they became a part of your life? What if I told you that psychologists have actually found a set of steps that increases the likelihood of actually making a change in your life? Well, they have. And in this video, I'm going to go through each stage of something called the trans-theoretical model. This model serves as a how-to guide for adopting a new habit or changing your life, based on psychological research. People who successfully move through the first five steps of this model are much more likely to actually stick to their goals and adopt positive habits. This information is useful whether you want to quit smoking, whether you want your partner to go to the gym more often, or any other habit that you want in your life. Understand these steps of change and you can help transition yourself or others into a more positive, happy, and healthy person moving forward. So, what are the stages of change? Now, this model was developed in the 1970s by James Prochaska and Carla Di Clemente. Prochaska and Di Clemente had been studying people who tried to quit smoking. They found that simply taking action didn't actually set people up for long-term success. They had to want to quit smoking before they could take appropriate action and actually stick to their goals. Permanently changing a behavior or picking up a habit does not happen overnight. Some of these steps will last for months at a time before a person is ready to move forward. If you want to see a loved one quit a bad habit or start a new one, it's important to be patient with them. And even if your loved one is in denial, they might be in the first stage of the trans-theoretical model. And this means there's an opportunity for them to move forward. So step one is called pre-contemplation. The first step of the model is a pre-contemplation stage. A person in the pre-contemplation stage may be months away from actually taking action. They might not believe that taking action will actually be worth their time. If they try to weigh the pros and cons of starting a new habit, they will downplay the pros. So think about some habits that you know are good for you. Maybe you think that a vegan diet would help you reduce your carbon footprint, but you don't think that the high prices of produce or saying goodbye to dairy is worth the switch. At this point, you would be in the pre-contemplation stage. More research is needed before you can fully get on board with the idea that veganism is a worthy lifestyle choice. It's time to ask yourself some questions about your health, your diet, and your carbon footprint. Now, in order to move out of the pre-contemplation stage, the person needs to look within. A shift in perspective is necessary before the person can see that their actions are hurting themselves in the long run. They may have a hunch that a change needs to be made, but the brevity of their current actions just isn't apparent to them. But after it does, they move on to step two, which is contemplation. Once a person really starts to think about the consequences of their actions or inactions, they enter the contemplation stage. Now, many people stay in this stage for months or sometimes even years. They understand that their behavior is hurting themselves or others, and they can see themselves making a change within the next six months of their lives. But something is still holding them back. For many people, they still have a skewed view of change that prevents them from moving further. They see change as losing or giving up a habit that has been part of their whole life or whole identity. This overshadows the benefits of gaining a new habit. For example, smokers tend to marinate in this phrase for a long time. They understand that smoking is bad for their lungs, but smoking also provides a way to socialize or de-stress. And smokers have a really hard time accepting the idea that they will have to have a coffee without a cigarette, or they can't take a smoke break when things get hectic at work. So how do you get out of this contemplation stage? Identify the things that are holding you back. Does the loss of a cigarette with your coffee really outweigh gaining the ability to take a job without losing your breath? Or does the annoyance of moving your schedule around outweigh the benefits you'll gain from going to the gym in the morning? Continue to look at the pros and cons of changing your behavior. Sometimes strategic thinking helps with this. When you get to a point where you feel confident to move forward, validate your readiness and confirm that it's time to change. Next, we can move on to step three, and that is preparation. Okay, so what happens when a person has decided that they're going to make a change? When it comes to the example like smoking, many people start with reducing the amount of cigarettes they smoke. Now this is normal. Small changes are part of the third stage of change, preparation. People in the preparation stage are fully ready to make a big change within the upcoming month. They understand the benefits of the change and they want to move forward. But rather than diving in headfirst, they usually just test the waters of change to see what it's like. Now this is an exciting opportunity to prepare yourself or someone else to make the leap. Enjoy this time in this preparation stage. The more prep work that you do, the easier it will be to transition into action and maintenance phases. So you can set yourself up for success by doing research on upcoming obstacles that you might face and how other people have moved past them. You can also create something called SMART goals for yourself. And something else that is helpful is looking up alternative plans of action in case your actions do not work out. The more knowledge you have moving forward, the easier it will be to evaluate failures and move forward after successes. But after the preparation stage, we have step four, which is action. 
Reducing the amount of cigarettes you smoke is a small step. Putting down the pack for good is a giant leap. And at this point, a person has entered the action stage. It's important to remember that the first three steps provide a foundation for the action stage. Quitting cold turkey just moments after watching a documentary about the dangers of smoking works for a few people, but it's not guaranteed that everyone will successfully quit smoking that way. Pre-contemplation, contemplation, and preparation are extremely important steps. After all, you have to want and know that it's time to change. If you think about it, this is why New Year's resolutions don't always work out. We make these resolutions in December and give ourselves less than a month, sometimes even less than a week, to prepare. Without a plan of action or a support group, action only leads to insurmountable obstacles. Preparation helps to prepare for those obstacles and have a plan, not if, when you encounter them. But the preparation and the research doesn't just stop when the action phase begins. If you're ready to take action, know that your journey is far from over. You should continue to seek out support groups and other outside resources. And whenever you do encounter success, be sure to reward yourself. Now, usually the action stage lasts for around three to six months, in which the person will likely face multiple obstacles and sometimes dance with relapsing or going back into old behaviors and habits. Next, we have step five, which is called maintenance. Once a person has kept up with their change, whatever that is, for at least six months, they enter the maintenance stage of change. Now, relapse is still possible, but a person in the maintenance stage feels more confident in their ability to stick to their change in behavior. For any habit, temptation will continue to pop up during this phase, and if you want to avoid a relapse, it's important to know that these temptations exist and to have a plan to avoid them. It's also important to know that relapses may happen. The more honest you stay with yourself about this possibility, the easier it will actually be to recover whenever a relapse happens. Lastly, we have step six, which is relapse. Because relapses happen, they just do. When it comes to substance abuse, the relapse rate falls between 40 and 60%. It can be hard, even after six months or five years, to avoid temptation, because falling back on old behaviors is normal. What you do after a relapse, though, will determine whether or not you stay in the model and continue to change. For example, shaming yourself for relapse is not always healthy. Taking the time to honestly look at what triggered the relapse, though, that is very healthy. Look closely at what barriers you face and when those barriers become too much. Now, this information can help you moving forward. It's always important to keep your vision in mind. Pull what you learned from the first three stages of the trans-theoretical model, and then you can start over again. I know this video may have been a little much, but I know there's a lot of people wanting to learn about the trans-theoretical model, and I hope this video helps shed some light on it. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I definitely hope you've learned something. If you have any questions about this model, feel free to leave a comment below or check out some of my other videos in the Social Psychology series. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.